This is Slasher here at Valve's Dota 2 Championships, the International 3 in Seattle, Washington. And I'm here with the creative director of Supergiant Games, Greg Kasavin, creator of Bastion before, and now working on Transistor right now. But you came to the International for yourself to be here to watch the best Dota teams in the world. What brings you here? Uh, well, uh, you, you just said it. Um, I'm, I'm just a big fan of this game, and uh, I, I got to be here last year and, and just didn't want to miss it. This is kind of my vacation this weekend. I, I'm here with uh, Amir, our, our studio director, who's a big, uh, longtime Dota fan, uh, got me into this game. Uh, he was a fan of Dota, like the original Dota, the Warcraft 3 mod, so he's, he's old school like that, and we, we have played a lot of Dota 2 over the last... Uh, I guess almost over the last couple of years, so we're, we're just here as fans, really. Uh, well, what aspect of this entire event brings you here the most? Is it the competition? Is it seems maybe some old friends again? Is it the, the artists? So what, what do you think it would be? Yeah, I mean, the, the main thing is like the competition. It's like I really love to watch uh, competitive play at this game. It's like I, I've never been into like competitive sports or anything. Like I, I'll watch, you know, the Super Bowl or something like that. It's a big event, but I've never cared about uh, professional sports really like growing up and but but I get it when I watch this game I get like worked up and I root for you know I root for teams or something like that and I understand it in a way that I, I never could with like basketball or ice hockey or something like that so um, I, I apparently I have that in me it just takes a game like Dota 2 to bring it out um, at the same time yeah we we have a lot of we have a lot of friends in the area it's great to catch up with uh, folks in this area that uh, even some we've uh, had a chance to work with uh, on the, on this team, thankfully through our uh, ridiculous fandom. So, uh, who are your favorite teams or players? Uh, I I uh, it's it's the dumb obvious answer, but I'm a I guess I'm a big uh, Navi fan. Uh, I was born in Mo uh, none of them are from Russia actually, but they're from that that part of the world at least, uh, mostly from the uh, several of them from the Ukraine. I guess um, I was yeah born in Moscow, so I got a root for. My boys from that part of the world, and they're they're so much fun to watch, and so kind of spontaneous, and uh, kind of never a dull moment in their games. Uh, but but really, I part of what's so great about this event, I think, is like kind of the pre rolls around each team, even teams that I wasn't really familiar with. Uh, you get to see some of their story and meet their players. So I, it's it's kind of heartbreaking to see any of them lose. I kind of like I want them all to win, but they you know that can't happen. Um, and you you pick up so much about their different personalities and play styles and their stories through how they play. But um, yeah, if I had to pick one, uh, I guess it would be Navi. Uh, so while you were editor-in-chief of GameSpot many years ago, uh, you've been working on Bastion and now uh, Transistor, which are single-player yeah. focused games. What draws you to competitive gaming and esports that's different from what you're currently doing? Yeah, I mean, I've always been into games of all sorts. Like even like my own skill set is, I think, more around well, I don't know. It's like I, I do writing for games and stuff like that. I love great single-player games, but um, it's to me, it's just not like mutually exclusive with what what makes competitive games great as well. It's just like the 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 acts of like human agility that take place at an event like this, and the games that enable those kinds of acts to happen are really fascinating to me. Like I, I played, I, I uh, still am, but I, I've I've been really into fighting games for as long as they've existed as like one of the purest expressions of that style of play of just games that are really about like the mind game between two players and and just these acts of physical dexterity you know using the controls so i love games that have really like sophisticated finely tuned mechanics like that and you know dota 2 being an, a, an excellent example of that and also games with like really interesting stories and characters and i love like i love the characters in this game as well like in addition to just the gameplay, so I, I think Valve has done such an awesome job of like reinterpreting these characters that started in such a weird way, like you know the way that Dota started. Of, uh, they're just taking any like character model available to them from the Warcraft 3 editor, you know, some random creep on the map, and they turn them into this whole character, and then Valve takes that character, reimagines them somehow. Um, I find that whole just the way that this game evolved is like really fascinating and kind of one of a kind. Um, so that's that's very cool to me as well. So we spoke a little bit before we we're doing the interview, and you said that you kind of went away from multiplayer gaming, competitive gaming for a little while, but now you're back. You've logged over 600 hours 
into Dota 2. What has brought you back to this area of gaming, which is very different than the kind of single player yeah. gaming, which is most of the gaming audience is used to? Yeah, it's like I said, I mean, I think it was just that um, prior to Dota 2, uh, the last game that really grabbed me like that was Street Fighter 4, where um, I didn't expect to love Street Fighter 4 as much as I did. Um, uh, because uh, partly because I love like sort of vanilla Street Fighter t or the Street Fighter 2, the 2D installments of the Street Fighter series so much, and I didn't, I was skeptical of how it would translate to 3D and all that kind of stuff. And then man, it just grabbed me, and I play that game uh, constantly for a, for a long time. But again, I, you know, I got two kids now, a wife, uh, a job, and all this stuff. Like I, I thought my days of being able to play games for hundreds of hours were. I, I feel a certain amount of guilt at like doing that. It maybe is not a great idea for me in the grand scheme of things in terms of where I am in my life. And playing a nice single player game for four hours, getting a nice story out of it, that's uh, more, it, that's easier for me to manage. Uh, but man, Dota 2 just, you know, started playing it a little bit kind of, uh, honestly, like for research and stuff like that. We make, we make isometric games also and Dota 2 uh, has like every cool ability that a character can perform from an isometric perspective is in Dota 2, essentially. Like you wanna know about cool short range teleports, well Dota 2 has like nine different excellent varieties of that or something like that. So started dabbling with it just to get a sense of the feel of it and before I know it, I'm just in kind of head over heels like going deeper and deeper down this rabbit hole, like learning about different characters and so on. It just started playing it in a legitimate way and uh, Amir, my colleague I mentioned before, he'd been into the game already. I think he was probably a little bit surprised at how suddenly, you know, I played with him a few times, suddenly he sees me online playing on my own. He's like, oh, what's happening? But um, Dota 2 has that effect on people, I think, uh, obviously as evidenced by uh, how quickly it's been growing and by an event like this where so many people showed up. What do you think separates Dota 2 and the Dota game as a game and legacy compared to kind of all the other games out there? Uh, like all other games or all other, like a... Uh, well, we could make it like all other games in general or you could just compare it to the competitive games too. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think Dota 2, it's like, I think it, there's an argument for it being like the deepest game. Um, and maybe that's absurd because there are many games that are, let's say like infinitely deep, uh, but Dota 2, I think the history of it is so fascinating. I've alluded to this a little bit before, like part of its origins as a Warcraft 3 mod and how like unexpected, like like how like side effects of the Warcraft 3 engine became aspects of the game's design. Um, like, you know, denying and th some of the really obscure mechanics in this game that, that a game like League of Legends in a very, for very legitimate reasons, you know, removed some of those mechanics to, to, in an attempt to kind of distill the gameplay down to the most important part. But Dota 2 has preserved all those things and uh, the, the sort of, the weird purity of it is, is very fascinating to me. And I think back to how in a lot of uh, competitive games, part of their depth came from things that were not intended by the designers. Everything from like rocket jumping and quake to combos in Street Fighter 2. Uh, to things like you know denying in in Dota, so I find those like tweaky, weird mechanics very uh, very fascinating, and and Dota 2 is full of those things. Um, so many just weird, unexpected combinations of characters. Like I said, I feel like I I'm just learning about this game constantly. I've been playing it for hundreds of hours now, still you know just at the very edge of my you know beginning to understand this game, and that's such kind of a cool feeling that you could keep digging into this and learning more and more about it. Now, talking about the engine, of course, the original Dota was a mod based off Warcraft 3. Now Dota 2 is on the Source engine. Have you seen any differences, negatives or positives, between the change in the engine for the game and how that's affected how it's played? Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar. Like, since I only sort of was like a casual observer of uh, Warcraft 3 Dota, I, I'm not I'm not close enough to the game to, to be able to see those things, but I find it I find it fascinating the idea that like like Valve has had to put like a ton of work into like recreating the particular minutia of like the Warcraft 3 engine. Like it's it's so 
it, it, there's something fascinating about that, I think, of having to like reverse engineer something older to make it work on, on something newer and fancier and so forth. Um, you've got these old school players that can go off about it, you know, for hours, I'm sure, about those, those minute differences, but uh, I, I just find it interesting that there's been this attempt to, to really preserve every aspect of that, of that game, uh, kind of in the way that, you know, I mean, v Valve is, Valve as like a steward of these classic competitive games is, has a good track record when it comes to Counter-Strike and Team Fortress 2 and now this of trying to really, uh, you know, it's arguable, I'm sure, but overall, like, as, as stewards of these long-running competitive games, uh, I, I don't think there's a better team out there than, than Valve that's, like, done right by these games over a long period of time. So. As competitive gaming in esports has been around for nearly two decades now with the original Street Fighter, uh, original StarCraft, in the past few years, we've seen a gigantic increase and in boom with StarCraft 2, Street Fighter 4, Dota 2, Kind of Strike Go, new Call of Duty, new Halo, new League of Legends. Like every game and every possible genre has come out. As a, someone who's been in the industry for so long, as a journalist and now a developer, what do you think about the impact of competitive gaming in esports and the overall ecosystem of the gaming world in just the last few years? Yeah, I mean, it's been great to see, um, you know. Something like Evo's been around for a while, but it like keeps getting bigger and bigger. Something like the International is getting bigger, and like StarCraft Champ. It's it's great to see the stuff growing, um, and not at the expense of the depth of these games. Like like I think for a while there, this is a I guess sort of a, a, a roundabout answer to what you're saying. But for a while there, my my impression was there was this industry trend around like the way to make games more broadly appealing is through accessibility. We need to we need to sort of distill and simplify so that more people can get into games. But something like Dota 2 is like the opposite of that. It, it, it completely goes against that, that wisdom um, by saying that what people really want is depth. Um, people have an, an unlimited appetite for just a deep and interesting game. Obviously, like a lot of work has gone into making Dota 2 accessible for what it is. There's all this training stuff and a great, you know, AI so you could play against bots and stuff that wasn't in the original Warcraft 3 version, but it's that core, preserving that core game, not dumbing it down. Um, in fact, making it more and more sophisticated, that draws more people in. I find that very um, heartening, um, you know, as, a, as someone who loves games, that, like, games don't need to be dumber to appeal to more people. In fact, they should be more uh, sophisticated. And then, meanwhile, you know, it's really owed a lot to the uh, things like Twitch TV, you know, um, the advent, just the accessibility, uh, the, the availability of live streaming, um, that people, uh, these matches can be broadcast in a way that wasn't technically possible um, on the same level, you know, three, five years ago. And that is opening this stuff up, I think, to a lot more people. Um, and it's great that, you know, you get these people who could really make a living off of this now. Um, uh, it's, it's, I think, from my point of view, it's fully legitimate now. It's just, uh, it really is its own ecosystem and with star players and all this stuff. And people on the outside can look at it and be like, I don't, you people are crazy, but whatever. Like, we don't need to defend ourselves. You know, we just enjoy it for what it is. And it's great that, um, it's great that there are so many people out there that, that can make it like a real thing so that, you know, guys from, Malaysia and Estonia and whatever can fly all the way to Seattle and win, you know, a million and a half dollars playing Dota 2 to a roaring audience. That's that's incredible, I think. Now you're working on Transistor right now and you did Bastion before, but now that you've been here at Dota 2 and you have this rekindled love for competitive games, do you have any aspirations to create your own game for the competitive multiplayer market? Well, it's like I said, uh, like I, out of respect for this style of game, like, we're a small team. We're ten people at Supergiant. I don't, I don't know that. Like I love working with the people I work with, and I, 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 I want to make many games uh, before I finally keel over. Uh, whereas something like Dota 2, like that's your life, man. Like you make Dota 2, you're signed on to Dota 2 indefinitely because this game is going to be around for a long time and just nurturing and maintaining it. Like I don't know. I don't know that I have it in me to do something like that on any level. And also, like I mentioned before, my own, my own skill set, you know, 
I have like a writing background and stuff like that. That's less important to a to a game like this than like getting those number. I, I'm not an engineer. I can't like program the game feel of something like this. So if I could do it, I would. I don't think I have it in me, but um, I, I love that stuff like this exists. And you know, we got to. It, it, we got to express ourselves through it in some small way. Yeah, we did our you know Bastion announcer pack for Dota 2. So we did that just for fun at, at first. Um, but it's like it really took off. So it was great to like be able to express ourselves just as fans of the game by doing something like that. Um, so I'm glad I was able to have some like indirect contribution. But you know I'm not I'm not sure what else I could do for for this type of thing. So Navi and Alliance are about to start, so we actually got to get out of here right now. Final question, Navi or Alliance? Man, like I said, I, I think I got to go with Navi on this one, but man, Alliance is super, super strong. So this is going to be this is going to be crazy, I think. Uh, I, I have no idea what's going to happen here. I think it's going to be a bloodbath. So we'll see. Best not answer ever. Hey, I but he said Navi. He did, and that's his favorite teams. That's going to happen. Thank you, Greg, for the interview. I think all of us would love to see a competitive game eventually. Oh, th thank you. Yeah, who knows what who knows what will happen. So stranger things have happened, I guess. Thank you. Yeah. Stay tuned to GameSpot.com slash eSports for coverage all weekend long of the International 3.